Hello my dear students. Today we start the second course of our lesson tie and die. In MTP 201 we had a lot of theoretical part of it but now in MTP 202 we will be practically doing them. MTP 202 unit 1 will be dealing with dies for tie and die. In this unit, instructional process of tie and die has been explained in details with reference to various types of dies with different types of fabrics. Complete directions are indicated as to prepare the color with each individual type of die. Objectives after going through this unit, you will be able to understand about different types of dyes used for tie and dye process, various dyeing methods used for tie dyeing. Introduction Dyeing is normally done in a special solution containing dyes and particular chemical materials. Dyes are usually soluble or can be made to be soluble in water. Once a dye is dissolved in water, the material to be dyed can be immersed in the dye solution. As the material soaks up the dye and dries, it develops a color. Dyeing Instructions The dyeing instructions given must be repeated for each color used. This applies to all dyes. With dyes, which are likely to be used, the quantities have been simplified and are given in spoonful. These represent level spoonful measured in standard plastic spoon scoops in groups of four sizes. That is one fourth, half, three fourth teaspoon, and one tablespoon. Urea helps to dissolve the dye powder when strong dye liquor is being prepared. Its use is not essential for tie and dye, except that it might help to dissolve reactive dyes when using the cold dyeing method. Dissolve two teaspoons urea in one cup of boiling water. Stir. Use this solution to mix the dye powder. Hot dyeing. Make a paste of dye 2 teaspoons with cold water. Add 4 to 6 cups hot water. Add salt or vinegar and stir. Dyeing with household dyes. Some find working with cold dyeing easy, but the same depth of color is not obtained with cold dyeing as with hot dyeing, but attractive pastel colors are produced. The method used for doing the dyeing would be make a paste of dye putting two teaspoons of with water, add 3 to 4 cups boiling water and salt or vinegar and stir. Bring the dye liquor to boil. After mixing, different colored dyes can be mixed together when they are dry. Self check question. This is the first question. I would want you people to answer what is the role of urea in dyeing? If you have discussed this answer, let us continue. Basic dyes. These dyes give rich brilliant colors even with a short dip of cold dye color, but unfortunately they fade badly. They are suitable for cotton, linen, West Coast Rayon, 
zilk, wool, and some mixture fabrics. Cotton and viscose rayon. The cloth must be mordanted and fixed before being dyed as follows. For mordanting, mix 55 grams tannic acid with 10 cups of cold water until dissolved. Soak the material in this bath for 24 hours. Heat to 60 degrees centigrade gradually. Squeeze the surplus liquid from the cloth and dry without rinsing. And leave to cool for 2 hours. Fixing Work the sample for 3 minutes in a bath containing 25 grams of tartaric acid. Developed in 10 cups of cold water. of calcium carbonate. For a strong color, make a paste of 10 grams dye powder. With a small quantity of acetic acid. Add 4 to 8 cups cold water and stir. Heat gradually but do not boil. To test for color, wet the sample and dip it in the dye for a few seconds. Squeeze out surplus dye. Rinse very thoroughly and dry. Wool and silk. Basic dyes may be used for wool and silk. These need to be modernized. Allow a longer dye time 
Add a little acetic acid to the Thai liquor. When the water is hard, add extra acetic acid to the Thai bath. The dyes may be mixed together in the liquor or powder form. Although basic and direct dyes may not be mixed together, it is possible to dye a sample with basic dye after it has been mordanted. As the direct dye acts as a mordant for the basic dye. Articles and garments to be used in artificial light may be satisfactorily dyed with basic dyes. Activity Dye a 8 square inch cotton piece with marbling method and then dye with the help of basic dyes. Direct dyes. These are good all round dyes, some having very good light fastness and are suitable for cotton, linen, viscose rayon. Some selected dyes are suitable for silk and wool. Hot dyeing method for direct dyes are. Make a paste taking half teaspoon dye powder with a little cold water. Add two cups of hot water and two tablespoons salt and then stir. Now let me give you another activity. Tie a 10 inch piece and dye with the direct dye method. Acid dyes. These are excellent for silk and wool. The colors are bright and intense. Some have very good light fastness. It is advisable to wash in warm water only. Rinse in warm water and dry quickly. Make a paste of half teaspoon dye with water. cups of hot water. Add two tablespoons globular salt And 1 teaspoon acetic acid 30% and then please stir. Wet dyes. These are very fast to light and washing. Wet dyes. These are very fast to light and washing. Suitable for dyeing cotton, linen, and viscose rayon and can be used for silk. The following colors form a comprehensive range which can be dyed at 50 degrees centigrade or after being wetted. Always use a thermometer to maintain the correct temperature. If the dye solution becomes too hot, the vat will be ruined. 
use rubber gloves when handling the dyed sample. Turning the dye stuff which is insoluble in water into a soluble compound is known as wetting. There are two stages in the dyeing process. Method to prepare wet. To make approximately 6 cups of dye liquor, we should use 7 grams dye powder and to that we should add 1 cup of water. 3.5 grams caustic soda flakes. and 3.5 grams sodium hydrosulfite. Method to prepare the dye bath. 5 cups soft water and 50 to 100 grams common salt. 3 to 5 grams caustic soda flakes and 3 to 5 grams sodium hydrosulfite. For preparing the vat, stage 1 In an enamel, make the paste of the dye powder, add 8 tablespoon of soft water and stir thoroughly and heat to 50 degrees centigrade. Put 4 tablespoon of cold water, then add 3.5 grams caustic soda flakes and stir until dissolved. Put half this caustic soda solution into the vat with the dye powder and stir. Next, add 3.5 grams hydrosulfite, stirring very gently so that no air bubbles are formed. Maintain at 50 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes, stirring gently and occasionally. When the vat is ready, it will have changed color and be free from specks. Preparing the dye bath, this is the second stage. Empty the basin containing the vat gently into the dye bath. Bring the temperature up to 50 degrees centigrade. Add tablespoon salt caustic soda flakes, sodium hydrosulfite and stir. Dye the sample from 1 to 10 minutes at 50 degrees centigrade. If the dye bath shows any sign of changing back to its original color, or specks are apparent, add a little hydrosulfite and the remains of caustic soda solution. Leave for a few minutes, then stir and resume dyeing. When the dyeing is completed, remove the sample from the dye bath and squeeze. Do not rinse, hang the sample to oxidize for 20 minutes in an airy spot away from the sunlight. For a stronger color, redip for 1 to 2 minutes. Once or twice, adding a little salt and caustic soda to the dye bath. Squeeze and oxidize after each dip. Rinse very thoroughly in cold water and then soak for 5 minutes in 10 cups of water to which has been added a few spots of sulfuric acid 10% or 1 tablespoon of acetic acid 30%. Rinse well, dry and untie. Boil the sample for 5 minutes in soft water and soap flakes, 2 tablespoonful to 8 cups of water. Rinse and iron while damp. <music> Re
Repeat the process for each color. Black must be wetted and dyed at 60 degree centigrade. Needs a little less hydrosulfite and salt but more caustic soda. Wet dyes for silk. Prepare the wet as for cotton but with less caustic soda. Use mostly for the wet. Do not put any in the dye bath. Use more salt instead. Dye for 1 to 5 minutes. Oxidize for 5 to 10 minutes. Soak in acid for 10 minutes. Rinse and untie. Wash in hot soapy water for 5 to 10 minutes. Rinse and iron while damp. Sodium hydrosulfite and caustic soda soon deteriorates. Buy in small quantities. Do not expose to the air. Seal the opening of the container with tape immediately after using and wrap in a polythene bag. It should be kept airtight. Indigo may be wetted and used in lukewarm water for dip dyeing three to four times for periods of eight, six, four and two minutes, oxidizing the sample in between each dip. Self-check question. This is the second question of the day today. How is VAT prepared? If you have discussed the answer, let me continue. Disperse dye stuffs. These will dye polyester, nylon and acetate rayon. The method for dispersed dyes are make a paste of 7 grams dye powder with warm water, add 8 to 12 cups water and heat to 85 degrees centigrade. Dye at this temperature for 1 to 30 minutes. Squeeze out surplus dye and then rinse. After rinsing, please dry the material. Add binding before dyeing further colors. Finally, rinse, dry, untie, rinse again and iron while damp. Reactive dyes. These fast to light dyes give bright colors on cotton. Linen, viscous rayon, and to a lesser degree on silks and woolens. These are fixed on the fiber by directly, so they are very fast to washing. These dyes penetrate readily so are useful for dyeing. Those of the folding techniques. Always wet out smaller finely tied bundles or the resist will be lost. Sometimes after untying there seems to be no resist pattern left but after rinsing and soaping at the boil the loose dye stuff is washed away and the resist will appear. The reactive dye stuffs dealt here are Prussian M. The Prussian M dyes are more concentrated, so less dye powder is needed in the recipe. These Prussian M dyes are also known as the cold dyes. It is most important that the fabric should be well washed and absorbent. Otherwise, the dye will not react properly with the fibers and the color will be washed away during rinsing. Wash the fabric for half hour in very hot water with half teaspoon lysopole D per 4 cups water. 2 grams per liter or detergent added. Rinse thoroughly. For tie-dye cottons, 
linens and viscose rayon, the following dye methods are recommended. The standard recipe is 1 teaspoon Prussian M dyes, 4 tablespoons salt, 1 tablespoon soda and 4 cups of water. Dissolve dye powder in 2 cups warm water and stir. In a separate container, dissolve the salt and soda in 2 cups hot water and stir. When the sample is ready and have been wetted, mix the two solutions together and stir. Place the sample in the liquor immediately and move about constantly for the 10 minutes and at intervals during the rest of the dyeing time. This is very important as the dye tends to react with the water rather than the fabric. If it is not moved about, dye at room temperature or up to 70 degrees but not higher than this. After the dyeing has been completed, rinse thoroughly until water clears. This may take several rinses as a great deal of loose dye comes away. Wash for 5 minutes in boiling water to which has been added a little lisopole D, soap powder or detergent. Move sample about, rinse, untie and rinse again. The sample can be undone while it is wet. A second hot wash after the sample is untied is beneficial and cleans up the resist iron while damp. Before dyeing a second or subsequent color, rinse the sample thoroughly to remove all unfixed dye. A hot soapy wash ensures good results. Very exciting patterns. Effects are produced by these dyes. If the sample is completely untied, rearranged and retied in between dyeing each color. In this way the design is distributed more evenly over the cloth and as each layer remains intact gives a rich interchange of colors and shape. Silk in place of salt, use 2 tablespoons globular salt and only 1 teaspoon soda. Dye for 1 hour at 50 degrees centigrade, rinse and wash off in warm water as described. Wool Dissolve 1 teaspoon Prussian M dye in half cup of water to three and a half cup of warm water. If greens and blues are to be dyed, add three fourth teaspoon ammonia acetate or two cups warm water if yellow, red, orange, brown are to be dyed. Add half teaspoon acetic acid 30%. Place the dry tied up sample in the above solution for 5 to 10 minutes and then add the pre-dissolved dye solution. Stir, raise the temperature gradually up to the boil and dye for 1 hour. 
Rinse and wash in warm water. Untie, rinse again and iron while damp. Repeat the process for subsequent colors. Once soda has been added to the dye solution, it is only effective as a dye for 2 to 3 hours. If the dye is mixed with some time before, put the dye solution and the salt soda solution in two separate bottles, mixing equal quantities of each as required. Tightly cocked like this, the dye can be used over several days. If only a part of dye is used, keep the remainder in an airtight container. We come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you people have all going to try the different techniques of dyes. Now let me sum up what we have read today. Different dyes are required to dye different fiber types. For example, cotton, silk, rayon, nylon, wool, etc. In this unit, we have dealt in detail how we are going to dye different types of fabrics with various types of hot and cold dyes for application in our dye and dye techniques. Now let me give you the possible answers to the self-check questions. The first answer was, urea helps to dissolve the dye powder when strong dye liquor is being prepared. Question number two, the answer to it was, the method to prepare vat is to make approximately six cups of dye liquor, seven grams dye powder, single strength and one cup of soft water. To that we add 3.5 grams caustic soda flakes and 3.5 grams sodium hydrosulfite. Now let me just quickly give you two terminal questions. Give a detailed account of direct dyeing. Actually I want to have you students to be practically doing that. Explain in details how VAT dyes are used and then practically do them. Thank you.